All right, Matthew 6 from verse 25. We are reading in unison. We don't want anyone to rush, except if you are planning to go to Russia. I want you just to read slowly because we want those words to sink in us. Are you ready? Let us read. Therefore, I say to you, Oh, stop, stop. You guys stop reading. Let me read. Goodness. I need to do a deliverance session for all of you. <laughs> Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. What shall you eat or what shall you drink? Nor about your body. What shall you put on? Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into burns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of Now, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. I repeat. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Let's go to Psalm 23. I hope we are going to be able to read Psalm 23 together in unison this time. Are you on Psalm 23? I'm not going to read. I want to hear you reading. Let's go. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. Next week, I want you to do this uh, from your memory. Anyone who can't, you are going to go to the children's church. <laughs> Let me read the last verse for today. Matthew 15 from verse 21. Mine is a subheading. Jesus sends a demon out of a girl. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her, Not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent 
except for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And your daughter was healed from that very hour. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you. We just want to bless your holy name. We come to you because we are children. We come to you for we are your children. We are called by your name. You are our father. Our spirit agrees and testifies that you are Abba. You are our father. So when we come to you, father, we are not coming as little dogs, but we are coming as children to the right father. And when we come to our Father, He will grant all our needs according to His riches in glory. This morning you said, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow has its own troubles. Trust the Lord. Seek ye first His kingdom and His righteousness. And everything shall be added unto you. You are our shepherd. We shall not want. You will provide all our needs according to your riches in glory. For we are your children. Your children are listening this morning. Your children are hearing this morning. Your children are gathering this morning to hear a word that comes from the Father. Speak to your children, Lord. Let it not be more about me. Let it be about you, O oh God, speaking to your children one on one. And O oh Lord, show them that you are the Father, a good, good Father who loves his children. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I just want to start with a, with a testimony. Um, I've been sick. Really, really sick. Um, during the course of the week, I could not even speak. I was sleeping like a little baby. Uh, I didn't think I was, not, I was going to come over here today. So for me, just to be standing here is a testimony. You may take it light, but to me, I just want to thank God. I don't know what was happening. It was my throat. It was my voice. It was just feeling tired. It was just, I mean, not feeling good about myself. But I thank God. My voice is still kind of struggling. Thank God for the mic. You cannot get that much. But I'm still kind of uh, struggling. Uh, they say it's something like an allergy. You know, Africans don't deal with allergies. You know, I think I've been here for too long that I'm now dealing with allergies. Uh, but uh, the Lord is with me. I'm going to talk on the subject food for children or bread for children. It is not good to take children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. The story that we read today is a story of uh, a woman. Uh, Matthew calls her a woman of Canaan. But Mark 7, 26 calls it a Greek Syrophoenician woman. And this woman is from the territory of the northeast of Galilee, which are the cities of Tyre and Sidon. But uh, we read from Matthew who said she was a woman of Canaan, naming her ancestors who were enemies of Israel. This story is just after Herod had successfully killed John the Baptist. So the disciples are kind of um, heavy right now. Even Jesus is processing the death of the forerunner John the Baptist. It was after Jesus had fed the 5,000, had walked on the water to rescue the disciples, had healed many people. 
And after this time, he says, I'm going to leave from this region, which is the region of the Jewish people, to the Gentile region. As he went there, some they say he was going there for a rest. Some they say he had a mission in the Gentile land to go there for a specific mission. I want you to know that when Jesus was moving from one place to the other, it was not haphazard. He would know where to go and why he's going where he's going. You remember when he passed it through where there was that legion. He went there specifically for that legion. Because that territorial spirit that was upon legion was making the gospel not to go into that region. So I don't know the reason why Jesus is going to the, this region of the gender people, the Tyre and Sidon region. And as he was going there, he met a woman, a Canaanite woman. And this woman went after Jesus calling him. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. I want you to break the three of them. She was accurate. She's not a Jewish woman. She may not have been taught about Yahweh, but she knows Jesus. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. This woman knew who Jesus was, that he is Lord, he is the son of David, and he is merciful. That's why she's asking for mercy. But in the initial stages, Jesus did not answer a word to this woman. He kept on moving. Jesus was walking with his disciples, and they are walking, and they are going, and they are going, and they are going, and they are going. And this woman is following them, and she is calling at the top of her voice, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. The more Jesus kept quiet, the more the woman continued screaming. She was a persistent woman. His disciples, they felt being nagged by this woman because she was crying on top of her voice. So they went to Jesus and said, Jesus, please, may you send her away? She is making too much noise. The, 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 the young people, they say, she's making a scene around here. Uh, Africans, they say, she's making fracas around here. Perhaps seeing that Jesus did not respond to this woman, the disciples thought he did not care about her or he did not want to help her. You know, sometimes you pray and you pray and you pray and the more you pray, the more you pray, you do not hear a word from Jesus. I don't know if there's anyone who have prayed for something over a long time and you did not even hear a word from Jesus. Then you say, no, this time I'm going to fast. Probably it's not hearing prayer only. So you fast and you fast and you fast. And you do not hear a word from Jesus. Then you say, probably I'm the problem. I'm going to go to a prophetic ministry. Someone is going to prophesy me. So that I can hear at least a word. You go over there. And you do not hear a word from anybody. I have news for you. It doesn't mean that Jesus is not listening. When this woman was calling and calling and calling, and Jesus did not say a word, it did not mean that Jesus was not listening. Jesus is hearing you. And is just still waiting to see your faith. The more Jesus was quiet, the more this woman of Canaan called him and called him. Perhaps Jesus wanted to test your faith. Or he wanted to see, to use this situation as a teaching opportunity to teach his disciples about faith. And that faith is available to anyone, whether
Jewish agenda. Then after a while of being quiet, yet this woman was just shouting, Jesus finally answered. You know, when Jesus finally answered, we like it. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Say anything. I want to hear from you. But the answer was not what this woman wanted to hear. I suppose the disciples, they kind of liked the answer. But the, this woman did not want to hear that answer. What did Jesus say? I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Interestingly, Jesus is saying these words while he is walking in a gender territory. He has a mission in a gender territory. This woman knows that he has come to our territory. He must have a mission here. And he's saying, no, I was only sent for the lost sheep of Israel. We know that Jesus ministered to all people, to many Gentiles in many different occasions. Even one of Jesus' disciples was a Gentile. Who was that? The other 11 were Jews, but one of them was a Gentile and he was a medical doctor. Who was that? Oh, goodness. I need to talk to Pastor Helen to take you to all children's school. You need to go back to be taught. It was Dr. Luke. He was a physician. He was a Gentile. So there's no way that Jesus would say, I come only for the Jews. When even one of his inner men, inner close men, was a gentleman. We know that Jesus came for all his people. Uh, can you put Psalm 22 verse 27 for us? If you can do that quickly, that will help. All right, if it takes time. Okay, there are many verses that talks about Jesus coming for all people, and not only uh, 22, 27, verse 27. All the ends of the world shall remember and tend to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. That's Jesus, right? So he didn't come for the house of Israel only. He come for everybody. So you will hear from Matthew 28, verse 19, Isaiah 56 verse 7, there are many verses that tells us that Jesus came for both the Gentile and the Jewish nations. But Jesus was saying to this woman that my mission for now first is to the lost sheep of Israel. What I'm doing right now is for the lost sheep of Israel. That's what I'm here for the sheep of Israel that are lost, I have to re them to receive me first. I have to teach them first. They have to receive first. Then, after that, I will spread my mission to everybody else. The Bible says Jesus came for his own, meaning ethnically Jewish people, but his own did not receive him. But as many as those who have received him, he gave them power to be called what? Some they say to be called children of God. Some they say to be called sons and daughters of God. Sons and daughters are children. He wanted the Jewish people to receive him first. And he wanted to make them kings and priests, as the Bible had prophesied in the Old Testament, so that they will go to the whole world, which was the Gentile nations, to evangelize. This is the reason why, from the time of Egypt, God had to choose a group, even through Abraham. Choose these people. And he says, you are my people. You are my beloved. 
You are my chosen. You have a purpose. I am going to reveal who I am to you. Through you, I will bring my own son. But your job now is to go to the whole world and share the gospel of my son, of me, to the whole world. So the, 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 the mission of the Jewish people was to become kings and priests of the Lord and evangelize to everybody. One of the goals of Jesus on earth was to make this happen. He came for the Jews first, but the Jews rejected him. But the Gentiles received him. And as many as those who received him, they needed power. They had to be given power to be called children of God. It's a little bit sad that someone came for you. And the mission, the intention, the motive is you. And you refuse to receive what is rightfully yours. I remember uh, at one time when Jesus was looking at Jerusalem, when people in Jerusalem had refused to receive him. He says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I have longed to gather you, um, you children, your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not willing. He goes on to say, you never, you not see me until I come back again when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jerusalem had rejected him. I remember at one time when in his own place where he was born and grew up, they'd refused the word and say, when he said the prophet is no honor in his land, he says, wait and see what will happen to Capernaum. In other words, wait and see what was rightfully yours is now taken out of you because you've refused it. So it's going to be given to the Gentiles. Miracles and healings and um, everything is going to happen in Capernaum because you have refused it. There are some things that are rightfully yours. But if you do not open your eyes, if you do not discern, if you are just distracted in life, what is yours, you can miss that opportunity. You will miss the day of visitation. A lot of young bachelors miss because they are looking for something that will come with whistles and bells. They, will, they miss the day of visitation. A lot of young ladies miss the day of visitation because they are looking for a Hollywood-looking bachelor. The Jews miss the day of visitation because they were looking for a warrior king. The one who's coming, he is going to come and fight all the Romans. So he is a warrior king. He is supposed to come and speak military language. He is supposed to come and tell us how he is going to fix the Romans. And yet Jesus came and said, if someone hit your left cheek, give them your Right, she, ah, <laughs> it's like, no, we can't receive you. What we are waiting for is a warrior. Because we have been prophesied in the Old Testament that when our king comes, he is going to fight our enemies. He is going to overcome. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, do you know what you are really looking for? Sometimes we miss what is rightfully Ours. Because we are looking for something with what? Whistles and bells. I was talking to this young man a few years ago. And uh, he had got um, three places to go to do his PhD. Two of the places were big. I think one of them was his Temple University with probably 40,000 students. And another big university. And the other last university was a mid-sized university in the state of Tennessee. 
And uh, as he was coming with breaking the news to me, he says, Pastor, the Lord has opened the door for me. And Temple University are going to give me 55000 every year until I finish my program in this telling me, and I was just listening in the spirit. And he says, and this other university, they say, I will do this, I will do this, I will do this. And the program only, the one program, it had like more than 80 professors. It's a huge university. And the whole university is more than 40,000. Then he says, Pastor, but there's also this university here, that size I can do this program. The university is not East Tennessee University. In case you say, oh, pastor, I did not want this young man, man to go, wanted to remain in Johnson City. Oh, no. And as he was describing his story, I said, do you want me to tell you if the Holy Spirit tells me anything about your choices? Or do you want me just to pray for you and you choose whatever you want? And the reason why I do that, I don't want you to, to disobey the Holy Spirit. So sometimes I just pray for you and you make your own decision. That way you did not disobey because you did not know. And says, Pastor, if you just tell me, I'll do it. And I said, are you sure? Day of visitation. As the conversation between Jesus and the woman continues, Jesus said words that makes our modern sensitivities a little bit ruffled. He said, woman, it is not good to take the children's food and throw it to little dogs. I, you know, you know uh, Americans, they love their dogs. They sleep with the dogs. They take care of the dogs. I think they may understand this verse different from me because our dogs will not come in the house. No, 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 no. They play outside. They sleep outside, whether it's raining or thunder or anything, you know. They do not really, really have a real meal, you know. When we finish eating what remains, we just mix it and we throw it to them. We are so horrible Africans. <laughs> <laughs> when I was growing up, we had hunting dogs, not us, but our neighbor. So we'd go to hunt together, and the dogs were so fast, so we could probably get a big animal, and we bring it home, and we share it over the number of people we were hunting. And the dogs will not get anything, but they were the ones that catch the animal. So our conception of dogs, our understanding of dogs is different. But to the Jewish people, dogs were a term which was applied to the gentle people. They were saying dogs may make it to heaven than the gentle people. They were less than dogs. You remember how the Jewish people and the gender around them, they hated each other. So they looked down upon them. So the word dog, as it was used within the Jewish community, it was something that is debased, something that is just down there. Jesus said, you can't give food for children to dogs. Was he disrespecting this woman who had also a sick daughter? Calling them dogs? Perhaps Jesus was speaking in figure of speech, figuratively. Yes, we know that Jesus has used a lot of proverbs, similes, idioms, and figure of speech. Let me use speak of speech that is used in, by Americans. They say, it rained cats and dogs. What does that mean? It rained a lot. Right? It doesn't mean that cats and dogs were actually coming from and they were raining, right? It was a figure of speech. So perhaps he's using this as a figure of speech. That this is for children. I cannot give it for people who are not children. Or perhaps he was showing 
the attitude of the Jewish people that you take these people as dogs, but it's different from his attitude, which is going to reveal in the next few lines down the line. So here Jesus was saying, I came first for the Jewish people so that they can believe in the Messiah who was prophesied to them over and over and over so that I can impart and teach them. Then later on, I will give them the job to also teach and impart and evangelize to the general nations. So for right now, my mission is focusing more on my people before I focus on you. But I like this canine woman's faith. Instead of being offended by what Jesus said and walk away, she took Jesus to task. She also used the figure of speech. She says, that's true, my Lord. But even dogs under the table, they eat from the master's cramps. She did not care about being called a dog. She cared about the blessing that she was going to get from Jesus. She really knew that this man is the son of David. She really knew that this man can show me mercy over my daughter who is demon possessed. She really knew that this man is truly a lord. So I am not going to be confounded by these words or discouraged by these words that are used by the Jewish people who call us dogs. I am going to still go after what I need from this man. This woman persisted even when Jesus said, I did not come for you, but I come for the lost sheep of Israel. Instead of calling Jesus, you are phobic. How can you call me a dog? Or you are a racist person. How can you call me a dog? She insisted and cried, Lord, help me with exclamation mark. She did not take offense. Let me talk a little bit about taking offense. Some people have failed to get their blessings because of taking offense. Look at your neighbor. People fail to get the blessings that were rightfully them because of what? Offense. You are too sensitive. You are too touchy. Any little thing is a big thing. I, I, I remember, you know, just think, uh, uh, you, you, you know, you, you go to church and someone says, you know, I went to that church for the first time and I went for the second time. The pastor did not even greet me. Other people greeted me, but the pastor and the pastor's wife, they did not even talk to me. I've been going there for like five times. They've never even greeted me. I am stopping going to that church. Do we come to church to be greeted by the pastor? Huh? Do we know what we come to church for? We are too touchy. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, are you touchy? <laughs> I remember this lady. This is 2010. So it's a long time ago. She used to come to Bread of Life. We were still worshiping in a hotel. Uh, she was a, She wanted to sing solo songs. For some reason, we have never sing really solo songs in Bread of Life, and there's nothing wrong about solo songs. We just want the corporate. You know, God wants to hear you and me and her and everybody. What? Singing to who? To God. That's kind of the way that I take it. And there's nothing wrong about solo. And she came and says, no, you can sing in the, uh, with, with the present worship. No. She wanted to sing what? Solo. Solo. <laughs> so <coughs> we, 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 we talked with her and we said, you know what, since you are still like a new person, just come and suck, come and learn. 
Just sit under the feet and just learn more information. You know, suck the spirit. What is the, the Lord is doing in this place? No, she wanted to sing what? Solo. So she went to the community. And she started to say, those people, they are not yet ready for me. I've talked with the pastor's wife five times that I want to sing what? Solo. And she has never allowed me to sing solo. So I'm stopping going to that church. I'm going to another church because she was not given an opportunity to sing what? Solo. 14 years down the line, we haven't seen solo. We are too touchy. Let me tell you, demons are very touchy. I'm not saying we have demons. Demons are very what? Touchy. When you come to a place where powers from your father's house knows that I'm going to be delivered from here, they don't want you to be there. You talk to Sister Jennifer and Sister Jennifer just says something and you'll be like, <laughs> even the usher in that church. I'm not going to go to that church again. Even the usher. It just happens that you are coming and whoever is standing by the door, you know, greet the person who's next to you and help the person in. Then you are the next person and for some reason is distracted. He did not greet you. It's like, hey, hey. The Bible says no favoritism. We are so, so touchy. We take offense too way much. The devil knows the place of your breakthrough. And he will try to make you to pick offense so that you no longer receive what is intended for you from God. I want you to look at your neighbor again. Say, neighbor. Don't be easily offended in the church. Remember how patient are you in the restaurant? <laughs> There's a church that I went to when I graduated with my, my first degree, bachelor's degree, and I was working in a certain region. And I went to that church and uh, I used to be a backbencher, you know, a person who always sit in the back. Even if I'm the first one to come in the place, I feel comfortable to sit in the back. There's nothing wrong about that. There's psychology behind it. And uh, so I just came and I sit in the back. And this pastor was so much used to the congregation. He knew everybody. I think it was um, the wife of the pastor greeted me at one time. Nobody else really greeted me. But the word was true. The word was life. And I said, this is my place. So I continued coming to that church for a while. One of the days, the pastor was prophesying. And he says, you guy who's in the back, obviously I thought it was not me. I mean, it's like he's talking about someone. So I didn't even you know, focus on that. You, I don't know your name, but you I was going there for about three months. He doesn't even know his, my name. I mean, I don't know all your names. Please don't be offended by that. <coughs> don't go there. <laughs> you guy in the back come. And I came to the front. And he says, I've been watching you from the first day that you started to come to this church. I see how you raise your hands towards praise and worship. I see how you dance when others are dancing and no one is, you are not even looking at anybody, you are just enjoying the Lord. The Lord is saying today is your day of visitation. And he says, put your house in order because b b b before this year ends, you will be out of this country. I was like, I'm not applying to go anywhere. I am thinking that my roots are there. And he says, put your house in order. You are going to be leaving this country very soon. Come over here. <clears throat> he had uh, anointing oil that he used for the church. Then he had special anointing oil for himself, for his family. You know, sometimes, let me explain this. Sometimes pastors, they get into a very long time of fasting. Like, you know, 70 days of fasting. And the, by the Holy Spirit, he says, pray for this oil. You use this oil, you and your family, when 
this and that. When anything in an attack that is coming. So sometimes pastors can have that oil that they fasted over a long period. Then they have oil that is prayed for, for by many pastors for the whole church. It says, so he went, he took this oil from his office. And he came and says, I only use this oil for my family. But now I'm going to use it upon you. Because things that are supposed to happen on you, they have to happen very quickly. And he says, are you applying to any university or to go to another country? I said, no. But do you, do you have any desire to go? And I said, for sure. <laughs> you can repeat that pastor. It was in August. By December, I have an I-20 to leave the country. I did not apply even up to that time. Don't be touchy. I could have walked after a month that the pastor has never greeted me. I could have gone to another church where the pastor will come and give me a hug. But also that pastor is not walking with God. It's not every pastor who's walking with God. What is happening in the United Methodist Church right now? They are splitting, right? Because of what? Let me tell you, the majority of them are remaining. They vow we want our gay and lesbian pastors. We ordain our gay and lesbian pastors. The other group says, no, scripture does not say that to us. So the, the, the minority, the few ones are living. Three quarters are remaining. This is a church that started in the 18, 1800s. That is breaking in 2023. After more than a century. Over the issue of. So it's not every pastor. Don't be touchy. Don't be touchy. If you're a child of God. You come to the house of God. To worship God. When this brother is singing, that's my opportunity. That's the time that I am worshiping. What we preached last week. And God dwell in the presence of the praise of his children. Then God is looking and say, hey, there is an Elizabeth there who is lost in praise. Let me visit her. Let me look at a situation. Let me take care of a situation. Pastor did not pray for you. Pastor did not greet you. But God, yes, it's better to be touched by God than a pastor. Don't be touchy. You can lose your breakthrough. This woman was not touchy. After being called a dog, and not only a dog, a little dog. He says, I can't give it to little dogs. You are not even a bulldog. You are a little dog. And she says, yes, master, even dogs also, they wait until the master eats and they go to the crumbs and eat from the crumbs. I have come for the crumbs. Heal my daughter. What God wants is faith out of you. He wants an I don't care attitude. This woman just showed faith in Jesus healing her daughter. And she did not care about Jesus' figure of speech or selection of words. She is focusing on heal my daughter. Then Jesus now said something. I, when you read the Bible, I would want you to pay attention to those things because we normally don't. Jesus said, Oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. Let's remove the word oh. Jesus could have said, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. But he did not say woman. What did he say? Oh, woman. So when you read the Bible, be very careful when you hear those exclamations, oh, woman. If, if someone says, um, you're beautiful, 
which of course all of you are beautiful. It's different when someone says, oh, you're so beautiful. I think I'm giving a lot of ideas to people. <laughs> Remember Jesus was walking. And this woman is crying. And this woman is crying and Jesus is not answering. And he continues walking. This conversation was not people who are sitting on the chairs. Jesus is walking to where he's going. And this woman is following. And this woman is calling. And this woman is crying. And his disciples are saying, oh God, they, this woman is nagging us. Can you just tell him to go back? And he did not answer his disciples. He continues walking. And the woman continues following. And he, he continues. Then Jesus looked back and said, no, I did not come for you. I come for the lost sheep of Israel. But the woman continued and said, no, oh God. Please, oh God, my daughter, oh God, oh, son of David. He, she continued even after she was told, I did not come for you. Then Jesus say again, no, I can't give what I have to you, little dog. I want to give it to children first. Then the woman says, no, I am a little dog, thank you. But I want to eat from the masters. And Jesus, oh, woman. I've never seen a woman like this who cannot take offense. Where she could rightly take offense. I've never seen a woman like this who can insist and persist even under these circumstances. I've never seen a woman like this. This woman is a woman of faith. This woman wants her daughter to be healed. Jesus did not say, bring your daughter. Because the daughter was not there. Jesus did not say, I'll, when I finish my mission here, where is your address? I'll come to your house. He didn't say that. He just said, let it be to you as you desire. Sometimes, just a word. Let me tell you something. Let me just tell you something. I know we come from kind of a Pentecostal background. And in Africa, you, you, you kind of people like it when uh, you are called by name and you are prophesied. And when you go to church and you have never been called or prophesied, people they think like God is not looking at me. We don't know God. If you are walking by faith, preaching is prophecy. Are you following me? What I'm doing right now, I'm what? I'm prophesying. It's only those who say, this word is for me. I receive it. Who receive it? There are some who are waiting to be called by name. How about if you are not called by name? <clears throat> this man of God was prophesying. And he said, there is a woman here who wants a baby. And uh, the Lord is saying, he is going to give you a baby soon. I want a woman who wants a baby, raise the hand. And my hand was high. And he looked at me and said, is this guy crazy? I am talking about a woman who needs a baby. So when he finished praying for that woman after church, he came to talk to me. I think he wanted to find out if I'm okay. <laughs> and he says, uh, tell me what, what are your needs? And I told him, and he said, it's granted. And it was granted. Just speak a word, O oh Lord. Your servant is listening. Just speak a word, O oh Lord. Your servant maid is listening. What do you speak, O oh Lord. Let it come to pass. The Bible says at that very hour, that very hour, the daughter was healed. I want to finish with this. I want to talk about food for children. Most of the things that we fast for are food for children. What we always cry for is food for children. Matthew 6 that we read, he says, I know you are worried 
about clothes. You are worried about food. You are worried about all these things. My Father in heaven knows that you need these things. My heavenly Father knows that you need them. He will give you these things. He knows that you want these things. He will give you these things for free. There's a student here who's saying, am I passing this course this semester? Passing the course is food for children. It is food for children. There's someone who says, when I finish this degree, will I get a HB visa? Will I be selected? Green card is food for children. There's someone who's saying, oh Lord, will I get married? Lord, I've been waiting. Marriage is food for children. There's someone who's saying, Lord, am I going to have a child? I've been waiting. Fruit of the womb is food for children. There's someone who has been sick, and you'll be like, Lord, I've been sick. I've gone to the doctor several times. Lord, please, please. Healing is food for children. Someone doesn't have money. Money is food for? But the bottom line is, you must be a child first for you to receive food for? You must be a child of God. You must have said at some point in time, Lord Jesus, I've received you to be my Lord and my Savior. That sinner's prayer, if you've never done it, please, please see me after church. Because all that, what I'm talking about is for children. So, if you are not going to be a child, when these things are freely given to children, you may not receive anything because these things are given for children. When I need anything before the Lord, when I go before the Lord, I use this scripture. I said, Lord, you said um, there is food for children. Lord, I want this thing and I'm your child. So this thing is rightfully mine because I am your child. So Lord, I am not going to fast about this. There are some things that I've agreed with God that I'm not going to fast about them because they are freely given. How many of you have fasted for oxygen? Yet oxygen is the most important thing that you have right now. Everything else is number two. If the oxygen is just compromised for a few minutes, you are in the ER. How many of you have fasted for oxygen? So there are some things that I've said, God, I'm not going to fast for this and this and this and this because these are food for children. Then he says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all the food for children is given to children. Let me tell you, if you do not want to receive Jesus first to be your Lord and a Savior and live righteously as the Bible dictates, then you are the problem. You are not the solution. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. What you are supposed to be learning about, Google kingdom of God. Find information about the kingdom of God. Find out are you in the kingdom of God. Do you belong to the kingdom of God? When Jesus came on earth, he was not preaching about the church. He was preaching about the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Because children, they belong to the kingdom. And live righteously. Then once you do this, everything else is added unto you. It is food for children. Today I want to declare some few things. Now there are some people here who have been crying to God over a specific certain thing. And you have been thinking that, Lord, will I ever get it? Lord, will it be possible for me to get it? I come to prophesy to you that, yeah, you are going to get it. Because it is food for children. All what you need to do is to be a child. Make sure that you are a child of God. Make sure that you have received Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior. Make sure that you are living righteously for God. And when you do that, everything else is going to be added to you as food for children. For my father knows that you need these things. 
God will not make you to get a visa in your country, which is more difficult than getting a green card. If he didn't want you to come over here, he would not be here. In my country, I was talking to one of my friends when I went in, in recently. He says a lot of children of uh, you know, uh, ministers, members of parliament, they've been going to the American embassy over and over. They are not getting what? Visas. They go and show that their father is more than 10 million. And it's real. And it's the bank's statement of the father. And the American embassy just look at you. They don't have to give you a reason why they're rejecting you. They just say, not this time. And you, you can't appeal it. You can't do anything. And yet you, your father is not an MP. He's not a governor. He's not a senator. You went to that embassy and they looked at you with your accent, some of us with our broken English. <laughs> and they said, okay, have a good journey to go to America. Now when you are now in America, you are worried like, Lord, will I get an HB visa? Ah. Oh, you of little faith. How can God give you bigger things and fail to give you smaller things? I want you to be a woman of faith who say, be at peace. Who says, you know what? I'm here to stay. If God told you that you're going to stay, if you want to stay, you just say, Lord, I'm here to stay. I still have some work to do here. Except if I must go you speak to me clearly so that I hear what you want. I understand it's not everybody's blessing that is in this country. Some of you, you come and get your education and you go back, you start to run a multi-million dollar business in your country. So sometimes God tells you that, daughter, you need to go back. I know people have gone back with more money than me. Right? But the right place for now for me is here. So I don't want you to worry and especially when you're about to graduate. Hey, people do not sleep well. Or May the Lord be merciful. And people, it's like, oh my goodness. I did that. So I'm not preaching you, I'm preaching me. When I was about to finish my master's, <laughs> I, but, but one thing good, my prayer life went up. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> my prayer life went up. And I was like, Lord. And, and during that time, my country was going through one of the worst economic meltdown. We had been slept with sanctions. We were still at Mugabe and all that kind of stuff. And everybody was, that I was talking with says, you know what? Do not come here. Even if you become an illegal immigrant, <laughs> stay there. And the people were making me to be so scared. You know, the more you talk with people who are still in Egypt, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm talking in my case, I'm not saying every African country is Egypt. No, I'm not saying that. And people were threatening me. And I was like, Lord, and I got these three places and they did not have a full scholarship. And uh, one of them was saying, yeah, you can come, but I was supposed to pay something like 25000 eh? Even after a partial scholarship, where do I get 25,000 here? A lot of things were happening. I go to sleep. My pillow would say, wake up. I don't, I don't know what was making me to wake up. I blamed my pillow. I would wake up and just like, Lord, what do I need to do? I applied for my OPT. I'm still all waiting for the OPT card. And you know, all sorts of things are happening. Then I remember one of the days. I'd wake up around 2. I <laughs> was li living in a, in a university at Bote Hotel, so I was living like in the sixth floor. So I came down to the stairs. I could not be even in my room. You know, I had my Bible and I'm reading. And I become sleepy. And I heard an audible voice from the Lord. Very audible. Do not forget what I bring you to this country for. You are going to declare my word in this country. This is why I brought you to this country. I woke up, and I was like, okay, I'm here to stay. I'm going to declare the work of God in this country. 
Then I slept again. It was not sleeping, just like closing your eyes. On the stairs, no one is coming up and up. And the voice came for the second time. And he says, you will still do what you want. Because I was praying to go further with the education. But it is only a stepping stone of what I've called you to do. I don't want to forget that. That anything else that I have is a stepping stone to do what God asked me to do. Because if I don't do what I'm doing right now, I can go to heaven and say, Lord, you know, I, you know, I was worshiping you. He says, no, you didn't do my work. My work for you, I took you from your country to this country to do this work, but you did not do what I called you for. I would have missed the mark. I may have a name with a litany of degrees, but I still have what? Missed the mark. A lot of people, the devil does exchange. He knows that <laughs> this doctor really loves the Lord. If he stands up and preach, a lot of people come to God. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to distract him and give him positions after positions so that he's busy with his work and is no longer taking care of what? what I've called you to. Be very careful of that. Because the Bible says when we go to heaven, some will say, Lord, Lord, did we not cast demons in your name? Did we not preach in your name? Did we not do all sorts of work in your name? And God says, away from me. Let's stand up and pray. Don't miss the mark. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's full.